Hi, I'm Natalie and in today's video I want to talk about dismantling my white feminism and going on a learning journey. I consider myself a feminist. I want women to shatter glass ceilings. I want women to be free to make choices that benefit them. I want women to get paid fairly. I want feminized labor and jobs to be seen and valued. I want all people to care and to perform care work, not just women. To put in the emotional and mental labor of creating a home that is warm, safe and comfortable. I want women to feel safe in the streets. To wear whatever they want, to be able to drink and do drugs and lose their minds if they choose to. And know that they won't be sexually harassed or assaulted. And then being blamed for it because they weren't being careful. I want women to be seen and heard as fully autonomous, creative, independent thinkers whose ideas and strategies are powerful and are able to create lasting change. Women self-actualized and possessing their own lens through which they make sense of the world. But all this is known as white feminism because I am white and I am privileged. And these ideals are possible because I have a job. I have a home that's safe and it's mine. I have money and access to childcare, which means I have time on my own. I have ideas and education and a platform that enables me to have a voice. But what about folks that don't have access to those things? How can you worry about feminism when you're worried about your safety? When you don't know where you and your babies will sleep? When you have to decide between having food or keeping the heating on? When you are not even seen as a woman because you don't have certain biological features. This week I went on a bit more of a learning journey and tried to find content that I could recommend here. But I realized that that would be quite hypocritical of me as I'm not someone with the rights or experience to lead anyone on this topic. So I would like to invite you to learn with me. Rather than framing this channel as a place where you can come to learn from me, I would rather frame this as a journey, as an unlearning of white feminism that you can come on with me. I just want to get this right. Feminist writer Zoe Samudzi in her book Can We All Be Feminists says that intersectionality is such a vital framework for understanding systems of power because woman is not a catch-all category that alone defines all our relationships to power. I want to learn more about power, who has it and who doesn't and to use intersectionality as a lens through which to view power structures in society. I believe that film and television creates narratives in society about what's normal. As someone who enjoys film and TV, and obviously what I want to base this channel on, means that I want to explore this topic through the things we watch. I want to discuss texts that help teach me and us about power and intersectionality and learn about how things like race, ability or disability, sexuality, nationality and gender are presented in the media and how these representations may challenge or reinforce the status quo. I want to underpin this analysis with wider reading and learning so I'm thinking of maybe doing one video a month on a book that I found useful on this topic and maybe starting some kind of virtual book club, but um, we'll have to wait and see. Let me know in the comments if that's something you might be interested in. So to start off with, as a little tester, today I wanna to discuss Michaela Cole's show, I May Destroy You. I wasn't able to make it the whole way through because I'm a parent and I just don't have that much free time, but it's quite a graphic exploration of the main character Arabella's experience with rape. And it looks at the experiences that her close friends have also had with rape, sexual coercion and manipulation. I May Destroy You is very good at putting characters in sexual situations that are very murky or unclear. Situations that if you had heard about them, you may have thought, well, it's their fault, or say, that's not rape. But what defines rape? What if something started out consensually and then didn't end up that way? I think ultimately what this show does well is explore consent. It shows us that blatantly disregarding a partner's choices, ignoring boundaries, forcing someone to do something they don't want to do, and lying and manipulation are all criminal and problematic acts that demean the victim and create a power imbalance. It tells the victim that their emotional, physical and psychological feelings don't matter. I heard on a podcast the other day that sex is about being human. It should leave you feeling more human. Bad sex leaves you feeling less human. And I quite like that definition. In this show, the sexual attacks leave the characters feeling less human. 
I did some reading of some different articles and opinion pieces about this show and a lot of them criticized the show for its treatment of one of Arabella's best friends who is a gay black man called Kwame. His sexual experiences and his assault were quite shocking to me but his storyline ends up painting him as a bit of a manipulator. He is both a survivor and a perpetrator in some ways. For this reason, as well as the show's success, people say that this show is not very intersectional and lacks awareness of the struggles of trans and gay people. I know I certainly have a lot to learn about these issues. And as I said, Kwame's behavior was quite surprising to me. I felt like there was something eye-opening about her story, but agree that perhaps the outcome of his story could have been better. As an aside, I do think that people place a lot of expectations on creators of media like this. If a creator like Cole is exploring a B-plot about the gay experience, that it has to be a correct and powerful exploration in order to challenge those in power. But I feel there has to be some room for error. There has to be some forgiveness for mistakes, because if creators are expected to be perfect and know everything, then it would be really hard to make something for the fear of getting something wrong. I know I have that fear. The show may have not gotten the Kwame storyline right or fully explored it, but there may be something to take away from it and maybe it will improve the next time round. In one of my favorite moments from the show, Arabella talks about her lack of awareness of being a woman and what that means. Prior to being raped, I never took much notice of being a woman. I was busy being black and poor. And I think this is the most important bit. In her experience being black and poor, being scared of the cops and hungry for food and love, in her words, is about survival. Who can care about the gender pay gap if you're starving? And this is why intersectional feminism matters and why white feminism, like I have been guilty enough, is problematic. We all need to fight for the essential needs of others while dismantling the patriarchy because helping white women break glass ceilings isn't enough. We can't say we've achieved anything if there are women still suffering. In I May Destroy You, the importance of continual sexual consent is the obvious takeaway. With the difficulty of reporting a rape or sexual assault as a gay black man in a homophobic system being the second most obvious storyline, there is the exploration of a young black man being accused of a crime he didn't commit. But again, this is shown using a very murky example where, in my opinion, there's no real clear right or wrong. I suppose the point of that storyline is that when a young black man gets accused of something, he often isn't given the chance to defend himself. All of these issues sit on a foundation of misogyny, racism, homophobia, and classism. It all intersects to create this story of destructive sexual violence that is possible and common in society. I'm not perfect and I'm still learning about what intersectional feminism means in the media. I hope that you got something from this video and I would love it if you commented below with any thoughts or recommendations you had for me and any content you have seen that says something about intersectionality. Thank you so much, I'll see you in the next one.